the sun is changing and it's a fucking nightmare. Okay. Hello friends and welcome to This Buy's Bookshelf. My name is Emily, I'm the Buy, and these are things that aren't going to be on my bookshelf because I'm getting the fuck rid of them. Here's a little backstory. I moved to California from North Carolina and when I did that, my mom moved to Arizona and we kept a bunch of our shit in a storage unit because I didn't know what my life was gonna be like in California. And so I recently moved into a new apartment and I have space and my mom moved everything from North Carolina to Arizona. So my boyfriend and I went and drove to Arizona and got a bunch of my stuff. Not all of my books, so when I get the rest of it, I'll probably do another one of these because I'm sure I will get rid of more books, but here are 45 books that I'm getting rid of from my bookshelf. So first up is Assassination Nation by Sarah Vowell. This is a nonfiction book that I was kind of interested in. I wanted one of her other books, but this was the only one that was available at the used bookstore that I went to when I bought it. And I started reading it and I like it, but I'm probably never gonna come back to it because I didn't finish it and that's just the way it happens, okay? I'm also gonna get rid of this book called Cinema Nirvana, Enlightenment Lessons from the Movies, because even though I have a bunch of movie books, because I do screenwriting stuff, you know, uh, I don't think I'm ever gonna read this. And then finally in the kind of nonfiction, I'll get to another nonfiction book in a second, I'm getting rid of Aziz Ansari's Modern Romance because of obvious reasons. I'm also getting rid of this book called Duel with the Devil, which is the true story of how Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr teamed up to take on America's first sensational murder mystery by Paul Collins. I bought this when I was going through a big Hamilton phase, as we all were, and it does sound interesting, but I'm never gonna read this, so somebody else can. Burr by Gore Vidal. Again, during that phase, I'm never gonna read it. I also was very into the pop culture and philosophy books, because I thought I was into philosophy. I'm not, I have, my brain can't function for it. So I have four of those, which I'm gonna get rid of. I have the Battlestar Galactica one, which is the only one I'd be interested in keeping because that show is so filled with so much. I'm also getting rid of the Buffy one, which is very much against my brand because Buffy is my brand, but I'm never gonna look at it. I also have a Doctor Who one and a Beatles one. Okay, let's talk comics. I'm only getting rid of a couple comic things. So I'm getting rid of the Essential Batman Encyclopedia, which I have had since I was in high school. I don't care that much about Batman anymore, so goodbye. I'm also getting rid of two collected volumes of comics. I'm getting rid of Misfit City, which I definitely thought I would like, but couldn't make it through it. It was sold to me as The Goonies But Girls, which is up my alley, is also written by the woman who wrote 10 Things I Hate About You. And I thought I would like it, but I couldn't make it through it. It's basically about these girls who live in the town where they shot The Goonies, but instead of calling it The Goonies, the movie is called The Gloomies, and that drives me fucking insane, and I hate it. I'm sure some people find it charming, I just, it doesn't work for me. The other graphic novel slash comic collection trade paperback I'm getting rid of is Dodge City. I read this because it's queer and it's like, a sports comic and I really like sports manga or I, I did when I used to read a lot of manga and I really like C.S. Picat's Fence series because I like her and like it's fun like it's a sports manga but gay but like actually gay. Gay is text and not subtext you know and I thought I would like Dodge City for that reason and I just didn't. It was fine but it I found both of these kind of confusing and like it just, neither of them worked for me. So hopefully they will work for someone else. Okay, so here's a bunch of general fiction I'm getting rid of. Jodie Picoult's 19 Minutes, which is about a school shooting. I am I never finished it and I'm not gonna read this. I'm also gonna get rid of Eric Idle's The Road to Mars, a Startup by Dory Schaefer. I bought it used, but it's the first time I ever saw a Book of the Month Club book in real life. Very strange. Kafka's The Trial, because it was a book that I bought to put on my shelf because I thought I needed to and that I would one day get to it and then I haven't and I shan't. The same thing is very true for Daniel Key's Flowers for Algeron. It's one of those like classic sci-fi books. In fact, it's like sci-fi masterworks, which I really like these editions of classic sci-fi books. I have a couple of Vonnegut ones like this, but I'm never gonna read this. I'm also getting rid of Pete Wentz's Grey, which is part memoir, part novel, and Pete Wentz is questionable as a figure. I'm not gonna read it again. And 
I just don't need it on my shelf. I'm also getting rid of Tom Holtz Falling Sideways, Ernest Klein's Armada. I've read a good chunk of this, although not this copy because this was in North Carolina for a while, but I used to work at this movie theater and somebody left a copy of it and when I would work at Ticket Taker because it was so boring I would just like lean against the table and read and this was one of the books I started reading and is bad. No thank you. Speaking of people living in video games I'm also going to unhaul The Lives of Tao by Wesley Chu. I haven't read this yet and I thought that I would because it seemed interesting but I'm just not gonna get to it so. See ya. The Warriors by Sol Yurik. I know for a fact I'm never going to finish. I read a good chunk of it in college. I bought it for a class because we were looking at stories that have been adapted into all four of the main mediums because The Warriors is based on a play, like an ancient Greek play. And then it was turned into this book that was then turned into a movie that was then turned into a video game. So it was like, let's look at how people tell this story. And I started reading this, I had every intention of finishing it for the class, but there are not one, but two very brutal rape scenes in this book, just so everyone knows. And I got to the first one and was like, mm, that was not fun and I did not like that. And then I got to class and my teacher was like, oh yeah, the next brutal rape scene. And I was like, there's a second? No thanks. I'm getting rid of Rainbow Rowell's attachments. I have read this and I liked it. I won't read it again. I have lots of mixed feelings about Rainbow Rowell as a writer. I like some stuff she does. I don't like some stuff she does. I'm not gonna reread it. It was charming, but also mm, kind of creepy. You know, you know how things be. Speaking of books that I bought for class, I took a Pride and Prejudice adaptations class in college, which was extremely fun. Really recommend. Uh, everyone was very strange in that class and I feel like they didn't understand what we were doing. Like when the teacher on the first day was like, we're gonna read Pride and Prejudice and then we're gonna read a bunch of retellings and watch a bunch of retellings of that story. Everyone seemed extremely confused. Anyway, so we read Pride and Prejudice, which I'm keeping because I love that book. And then we read a couple of other adaptations of it. I'm gonna get rid of these because I'm never gonna reread them. Honestly, I liked two of them. <laughs> The one I didn't like is Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. So I liked both of these books, but I'm just not going to reread them, so I want somebody else to be able to. One of them is Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding. This book is fun. This movie is fun. The other book in that series that I liked but I'm not going to reread is Jane Austen in Boca by Paula Martinez Cohen. This book was extremely fun, very lovely. It's basically a bunch of Jane Austen stories, including Pride and Prejudice, set in a Florida retirement home. But speaking of romance novels, so I'm gonna get rid of Deanna Garbledon's second book in the Outlander series, which is Dragon in the Amber. I bought it because I had every intention of reading it because my best friend Megan and I really liked the show, we don't anymore, but we really liked especially the first season of the show and so we both kind of were like, well, let's read some of the books. And she has read the first like four or five, I think. And she was like, well, uh, the first like two are fine. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I bought the second one because I read the first one, which I'm just not gonna read this because I don't really like the way that Diana Garbledon writes. I don't like the trajectory really of the story. And if I wanna revisit the Outlander world, I'll just watch the perfect first season of the show. I'm not gonna name these all individually. I also definitely have more than these. So the other two will get unhauled when I get the rest of my shit. But Charlene Harris's Southern Vampire Mysteries slash the Suki Stackhouse books. I have six of them here. I have eight. Okay, so you can definitely tell. I think these are the four that I've read. So I only ever make it when I try to reread this series to book four. Like I finish book four and then when I try to read book five, I just don't want it. The spine of Dead Until Dark, which is the first one, is completely just like shattered. So is Dead to the World, which I believe is the second one. I really like these books. They're extremely fun. True Blood is extremely fun and bad, very bad, but fun, you know? I know that these books will exist in a library somewhere that I can check out for free if I ever want to read them. And I also know that I will never read past book four. So who cares? It's also strange my mom and I were both very into the books and True Blood, True Blood first. And for some reason, even though we owned all of them in our house, because my mom got very into them, I still bought my own set. 
I don't know what that was. So I'm going to get rid of them because somebody else can love them and I can always read them at the library. So one of my favorite like categories is young adult and children's fiction, but I am also extremely picky about it. So is it my favorite? I mean, it is, but like, you know. So I'm going to get rid of a bunch. Gail Carson Levine, Cinderella's and the Glass Hill. This is, I believe, set in the same universe as El Enchanted. I'm not sure. But I was really obsessed with Gail Carson Levine's books when I was in elementary school, like upper elementary school. And I just know I'm not going to reread this, but I will reread El Enchanted and the other the one of the two princesses. I can't remember what it's called because I love both of those, but I don't think I need any more supplemental books in her universe. The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland and A Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valenti. I never ended up reading this even though I thought I would really like it. I bought it because I had bought, I was obsessed <laughs> uh, in early college, I think, with the movie Rise of the Guardians, which is based on the Guardians of Childhood series and I bought those or I got those books as like a gift from a friend who was also really obsessed with Rise of the Guardians and I really liked those books. They're very much children's books but I really liked them and so this felt similar and so I got it but I never ended up reading it and I, I'm kind of out of that phase right now and I just I'll get it from the library if I get back into it you know. Okay so we need to talk about <laughs> Rachel Hawkins Prince Charming. So I bought this because she has a second book in this series called Her Royal Highness which I know is extremely gay and I wanted to read it. I thought that it was a sequel not just like a companion book that you could read individually so I bought this one and I did the like first chapter thing because I was like in a rut and needed to figure out what I wanted to read next. So I grabbed this. This was one of the books I read the first chapter of and wow it did not work for me. <laughs> I did not vibe with this book. It makes me question whether or not I even want to read the other book because I just did not vibe with her writing style. I'm sure it works for some people, not me. Okay, Libba Bray, <laughs> The Great and Terrible Beauty. A Great and Terrible Beauty, I'm sorry. I've had this book, I think, since middle school. I think I bought it as soon as the paperback came out. I have wanted to read this book for so long and I just haven't. So I'm gonna get rid of it because it stares at me and has stared at me from my bookshelf since I was probably 12. I think I tried once and I just couldn't get into it and so it's going away. I'm gonna make it disappear. So M.T. Anderson's The Astonishing Life of Octavia Nothing, Traitor to the Nation. I've heard this book is very good, which is why I bought it, but I've also heard that volume two is not as good and I just can't deal with reading books that I'm not gonna like the sequels of, so. See ya. So let's talk about The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. There's a couple of his books he's written like very interestingly and like sometimes I'm into like weird shit and sometimes I just can't do it like syntax weird shit. I don't actually remember if this book is written super weird but I couldn't get into it. Also this movie is never gonna come out. <laughs> I have a friend who worked on it and she was like I don't know we worked on it literally years ago and they're doing reshoots but also I don't know. I'm just gonna let this go and I will pick up a different Patrick Ness book because I think I will like him as an author in general. This one just wasn't for me. Goldie Moldovsky's Kill the Boy Band. I have this as an audiobook and while I have a hard time listening to audiobooks um, or narrative fiction, if I want to read this I think I'm gonna do that. I tried to read it physically and it, I don't think it was the right time so I'm just gonna get that away from me, listen to it on audiobook whenever it feels like the right time or just never consume it as a product. I don't know. It is Hashtag Murder Trending by Gretchen McNeil. I bought this and read it for a very specific reason that didn't end up doing anything. This book is aggressively fine and I'm never gonna reread it and I'm never gonna read any of the sequels because I wasn't that interested in it and I didn't think it was the greatest. So somebody else can read it. And then the last book in the young adult young reader section of this unhaul is 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. I bought this before I moved to California, brought it with me to California. It was one of the few books I brought with me. I bought it though after the show because I was obsessed with the first season of 13 Reasons Why on Netflix, which is bad. It's a very bad show and it doesn't handle mental illness well or suicide well at all. And I recognized that I was able to invest in it and enjoy it as like a story without really dealing with any of the bad stuff that they were doing because I'm 
in a fine mental state and that kind of stuff doesn't really affect me or wasn't affecting me at the time. I bought this because I liked that and thought maybe I would like the book. I'm never gonna read that. Get out of here. And then finally, I have three books that I already own a copy of. George Orwell's 1984. So this I think I, this copy of it, I think I owned first, but then I recently or at some point acquired a smaller copy of it because this is like a weird tall airport version that I don't want and I hate when books are tall like this. So I'm gonna keep the other one, get rid of this one. And then the other two are Shoot That One by Harvey Ogrijo Markswatch, who's a TV writer, and The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I bought both of these on Amazon and the package got lost and then I reported it as lost and then they sent me new ones and then the package arrived. So now I have two copies. All right, so those are all 45 books that I'm unhauling at least at the moment. Why is the lighting getting dark? Who knows, it's a mystery to me. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. You can also just talk to me on Bookstagram. This buys bookshelf, come and talk to me.